those functions. Consider the following examples that associate names and phone numbers. There's Inigo Montoya, 555-1234, John Smith, 555-0300, John Smith, 555-4323, Vizzini Jones, 555-6661, and Fezzik Smith, 555-3945. If I ask you what's the phone number of Fezzik Smith, you can tell me very easily, 555-3945. But if I ask you, what's the phone number of John Smith? You can't tell me right away. There's two possibilities. If I think of the names as X values and the phone numbers as Y values, there's two possible Y values for the same X value when the X value is John Smith. Normally, we only list an X value the one time. But if I use the arrows to make the association, I can see that John Smith is associated with two phone numbers. So when we think about pairings, that's one way to define a function. And it is not a one-to-one -one function when we have two possible y's for a single x. The function on the right, however, which turns out to be the cubic function, f of x equals x cubed, is a one-to-one -one function. For each x, there's only a single y, and for each y, there's only a single x. So now I've shown you the example, let's talk about the formal definition of a one-to-one -one function. A function f is a one-to-one -one function if, for each a and b in the domain of f, if a doesn't equal b, then f of a doesn't equal f of b, or equivalently, if f of a equals f of b, then a equals b. Remember, the vertical line test will see if we have the graph of a function or not. The horizontal line test will take the graph of a function, y equals f of x, and it is not the graph of a one-to-one -one function if it's possible for a horizontal line to intercept the graph in more than one place. Let's consider the graph of a circle. I can imagine a horizontal line that intersects that circle in two places. So this is not the graph of a one-to-one -one function. In fact, a vertical line will intersect it as well, so it's not even a function. If I have this cubic function, any horizontal line I can imagine can intersect this function in only one place. So this is the graph of a one-to-one -one function. If I consider this example, in the first example, I have the set of three ordered pairs. 1, 5 is the first order pair, 2, 6, and then 1, 3. This is not a one-to-one -one function because 1 is associated with 5 and 1 is associated with 3. So it cannot be a one-to-one -one function. Even if I graph these three points, I can see the line y equals 5 intersects these in more than one place. If I consider the set of points negative 3, 2, 0, 0, and 3, 4. Each x is associated with only one y. This is a one-to-one -one function. So it couldn't pass the horizontal line test, as you can see here. In this example, we are asked to use the definition to determine if the given function is one-to-one. -one. In number one, it says f of x equals 4x plus 1. That's a linear function. So just imagining a horizontal line test, I think it is one-to-one. -one. When I'm using the definition, there are two versions. To show that something is one-to-one, -one, I want to start with two unequal x values and then show that I arrive at two unequal y values. So zero does not equal three. So f evaluated at zero is equal to one and f evaluated at three is 13. Since 1 does not equal 13, f of 0 does not equal f of 3, therefore f is 1 to 1. Start with two unequal x values to show our function is 1 to 1. Next, I want to do part 2. I want to find out whether g of x equals x squared plus 2 is 1 to 1. I can put it in my calculator and pretty much see there. It definitely is not 1 to 1. It doesn't pass the horizontal line test. To show a function is not one to one, I have to start with f of a equals f of b. So I have to choose my values strategically. I think that 
g of negative 2 equals g of positive 2 because g of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 all squared plus 2 so that's 6 and g of positive 2 is equal to 2 squared plus 2 that's also 6 so it's a true statement that g of negative 2 equals g of 2 yet negative 2 does not equal 2 so I have to start with a g of a equals g of b where a and b are different and then show that I have two different x values and therefore my function is not one-to-one. -one. Next I'm going to talk about inverse functions. An inverse function is a function that undoes the action of another function. The graph of an inverse is a reflection of the function across the line y equals x. Here's the graph of a function. Here is its inverse. Notice the inverse is a reflection of the function about the dotted line y equals x. Now let's talk about the definition of an inverse. If f is a one-to-one -one function, it has an inverse. It's not a one-to-one -one function, there's no inverse. The function g is an inverse if both the following conditions are true. f composed with g of x equals x for all x in the domain of g, and g composed with f of x equals x for all x in the domain of f. If f and g are inverses, then we write g as f inverse, which is f, and it looks like an exponent, negative 1. But it isn't. It means the inverse of f. Do not confuse this with the exponent. We can tell the difference by the context of the problem. In this example, we want to determine if the two functions are inverses. f of x is x cubed plus 1, and g of x is the cubed root of x minus 1. So we're going to start with f composed with g of x. So that is f feed in g of x. I know sometimes it helps students if I use a different color. So this is f. And instead of x, I'm going to put in the cubed root of x minus 1. So that is equal to the cubed root of x minus 1 instead of my x and all of that has to be cubed plus 1 so that equals x minus 1 plus 1 and that's just x and that's true for all x in the domain of g so that one works. Now I want to do g composed with f of x so that means g feed in f of x, so that is g, and f of x of course is x cubed plus 1, so instead of x I'm going to plug in x cubed plus 1, so this is the cubed root of x cubed plus 1 minus 1, and that's just going to be the cubed root of x cubed, so that is x, so that also works. So I've shown that f of x equals x cubed plus 1 has the inverse, f inverse equals the cubed root of x minus 1. So here's the graph of our function f of x equals x cubed plus 1. Here's the graph of our inverse, the cubed root of x minus 1. And you can see there are reflections about the line y equals x. If you've given a one-to-one -one function, you can find the inverse function as follows. Step 1, replace f of x with y. Step 2, interchange x and y. Step 3, solve for y. Step 4, replace y with f inverse. In this example, I'm asked to find the inverse of f of x equals x squared plus 1. There's a problem. This function is not one to one. When I look at the graph of the function f of x equals x squared plus 1, I can clearly see it is not one to one. If I restrict the domain of the function to just positive values, then I have a one to one function. So when I restrict the domain so x is only allowed to be positive, then the first step is to replace f of x with y. So y is equal to x squared plus 1 and step 2 is to interchange x with y and step 3 is to solve have 
x minus 1 equals y squared, y equals the positive square root of x minus 1, since it can only be positive. And step 4 is to replace y with the inverse notation, so the inverse is the square root of x minus 1. So here's the graph of my function with restricted domain. Here's the graph of the inverse, and here's the line y equals x. So f composed with f inverse is equal to f of the square root of x minus 1. So that is the square root of x minus 1 squared plus 1. So that is x minus 1 plus 1. That gives me x. So that one worked. Now I want to compose the inverse with the function. So f inverse feed in x squared plus 1. So that is the square root of x squared plus 1 minus 1. So that's the square root of x squared, and that's x. So I've shown that f and its inverse are in fact inverses.